Hello, welcome to Triple Think. My name's Lizzie Hodgson. Triple Think is, uh, we kind of focus on what we've learned, what we've done, and what we're doing. And this week, I'm really excited to welcome a very special guest, Mary O'Hara. Mary O'Hara is a, uh, I'm going to say well renowned blo- uh, journalist. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm saying that. She's also the uh, inspiration and the lead behind Project Twisted. Mary will explain a little bit more about Project Twisted, but Think Nation have been um, uh, hugely honoured to be participating with the project. I've been talking about it for a few weeks now, but I'll let Mary explain who she is, where you're from, and what you do. So I'm a journalist. I've been a journalist for maybe 18 years. I'm also the author of a book called Austerity Bites, and I'm a producer of a podcast called Getting Curious. With who is Getting Curious? Oh, with the lovely Jonathan Van Ness. So it's quite a diverse portfolio, but most of my work concentrates on social issues, poverty being one of them, and all the interrelated issues to do with poverty. Um, And do you want to explain a little bit about the background to Project Twisted? A few years back, at the beginning of austerity in Britain, I was asked to travel the country interviewing people about what was happening, where the damage was being done, what the likely outcomes are going to be of those policies and those cuts down the years. Um, As a result of that, I did like something like 12 months of interviews, interviewed hundreds of people. One of the things that came out of that was a sense that people who were bearing the brunt of those policies, people who were either in poverty or on the breadline, felt that they were being demonised um, within their society. They felt that they were being scapegoated, um, that they were being used as props to justify unnecessary cuts. Um, we saw terms like scrounger and skyver and striver all begin to get um, move into common parlance. There was a, a real feeling from people that it was reducing empathy in the society. Um, so I wanted to do more on that. I wanted to dig a bit deeper and find out what was behind that. Um, so Project Twisted is basically trying to unpick that narrative um, that to be poor is to be at fault individually. It's a personal flaw. So I wanted to find a way to challenge that narrative um, because in my experience of reporting all of these years, it doesn't stack up with the reality that I see. I myself grew up in poverty, um, so I have first-hand experience of it. So I wanted to try and find a way to um, reintroduce some dignity into this discussion and to reduce stereotypes. So Project Twist It, you're partnering with lots of different organisations, yeah. one of which is, is Think Nation. Yeah. What have you learned in that process? So this is like, what have you learned mm. when you're doing this collaboration? Because this can't work in isolation. The premise for the project was to throw out a fishing line, see what came in. It's not a scientific experiment. It's not a piece of academic research. It's very much a journalistic piece of work. So to do that, I reached out to lots of different people. Um, some I knew already. Already. Some people just started coming to us and saying, can I help? Can I get involved? How can I be a part of this? Um, we're able to do that because it's a multi-platform project. So we have short film, we have video, audio, animation, poetry, all kinds of ways of expressing a different kind of story that you know demystifies it to a degree, but also challenges some of the myths. I had no idea that people were going to just start reaching out and saying, can I get involved? Yeah. Now, through my journalism, what I already knew was that there were lots of organisations, especially at a grassroots level, lots of individuals doing remarkable work. Mm-hmm. In the face of a wall of negativity, there is such energy out there, but there's no central place for it. It's all kind of fragmented. Um, so I thought that maybe if we start yeah. reaching out and putting things together, then people would respond. And the most common thing that people have said is oh, this is such a perfect time for this project. I'm like, really, what can I do? I didn't expect that. Because of the work I do, I had a certain level of knowledge based on the austerity work. I was learning that there was a real appetite to not just sit back and let this happen unchallenged yeah. because there is a sense from a lot of people where they go well what can you do you know because it feels so overwhelming to people and I'm realizing that it doesn't have to be overwhelming and the people have a voice and they'll use it and from all demographics in my view it's like if the older generation screwed this up and got it wrong and we haven't figured it out then we're relying on those kids to come up with some answers that will hopefully shame us, you know. Yeah. I think that's really accurate and the work that we did with young people and are still doing with young people. Um, it kind of has a bit of a crossover with one of the other uh, projects that we work on at the moment, mm. Brighton Digital Festival, which is we're looking at homelessness and housing and mental health 
Um, and, and also beach pollution. But what we're finding when we're going out and talking to young people on that is these are issues that they want to find solutions. So there's an appetite to do something. Mm. And I think that that's the great thing about you know young people is that they have a an energy, a natural energy in them. Yeah. That you know some of us get a little bit jaded as we get older, but that those that energy also comes, I think, more increasingly with ideas because they are so much more informed about things nowadays. Now the information might be skewed one way or another but they have a they have a, a an I- idea of what's going on because of the way that information is, is given to them but also because of the way that they don't have those conversations yeah. in some places so they are hyper aware of these things mm. and that's what I found so fascinating that young people want to know about these things but they also want to find solutions um, and it's really been heartening that side of it. Yeah, I, but they get the issues, you know. It's um, they're bombarded with all kinds of messages all day long, but they're incredibly good at dissecting it. Um, you know, they can pull it apart and strip it down to its brass tacks, no problem. Yeah. I mean, they tell you stuff that you really need to hear, um, and that personally, I think all of us could do with hearing, which is what Project Twisted yeah. is trying to do. It's, it's that honesty and integrity that comes often from young people is lost. Yeah. or forgotten in, in some way. We asked three questions. What have you uh, learnt? What are you done and what are you doing? What that you've done has jumped out to you as being particularly kind of interesting or surprising or inspiring? To be honest, most of it. Um, and I'd be lying if I said there was one thing. I suppose one of the things that I'm very glad for is that every person I speak to, every organisation that I'm linking to has their own insight and brings something unique to the conversation that we're trying to generate. So there's a real richness and a real depth to the feedback that we're getting, to the input that we're getting, to the stories that people are telling. And like this week, we hosted a short film by a guy called Wale Shutu, which he made himself, called Council in Me, which is about life on a council estate, because he'd gone off to college, um, gone back to the council estate he grew up in, and was beginning to think, hold on a minute, pe- people don't know what it's like, you know, so I'm going to show it to them. And that's just a beautiful short film. It's music and poetry and people's faces, and it tells its own story, it speaks for itself. And it's a lovely piece of work. Having this project means that we're able to find another space for it and a platform for it. And that's really gratifying, um, finding those pieces of work. You know, I've, I've interviewed artists who paint working class life, and it's full of colour and joy and laughter. And as a journalist, I know that when you depict these things in newspapers, it's often just, you know, dripping in, in misery. It's as if people in poverty are, you know, one-dimensional, which is patently not the case. So finding all of this rich content that really creates a tapestry of life is the thing I'm enjoying the most um, and that is certainly the most gratifying and that we're going to keep doing because we've got like another seven months of this. We've got a load of great stuff still coming down the line and like every time new stuff goes up I'm I'm actually really proud to be able to put it there. And what's coming up, so you say you've got seven more months to go. Mm Mm-hmm. That's a lot, yeah. but also quite a short period, really. It's interesting because I said earlier that so many people are coming at us with stuff that when I start trying to timetable it, um, how am I going to get it all in, you know? Because you don't want to put too much content up every time you put it up. You want to give people a chance to digest it and, and to go back into the archive. So with seven months more stuff coming up, we're, we've got an animation um, coming down the line from the comedian and animator Howard Reed, which I'm really, really excited about, where he's taken a story of one of the women I interviewed on Skid Row in Los Angeles who became a mosaic artist, and he's animated her, um, and we've storified that into a 90-second animation that tells June's story in her own voice. Oh, wow. got a graphic artist called Shane Pangborn who's creating a comic strip for us where we imagine the, the typical low-income family that debunks the myths um, around what it's like to live in those circumstances. I've been interviewing people across in different parts of America and in the UK, everything from domestic violence victims who were plunged into poverty as a result of those circumstances, talking about the reality of dealing with that, to youngsters with um, anxiety problems who've you know, had social interaction issues who've transformed into these wonderful performance poets. I think one of the things that struck me as well is, I mean, even though with, with Think Nation we have a, a, a kind of skew around how does technology play into all of this, but one of the things that we is really, really important to us is, is actually that use of creativity, the arts in that. And I think that, that 
that is the the way of human expression. It's the way of telling stories. It's how we understand it's ourselves. It's how we understand ourselves and the world within which, for young people, they're inheriting. Yeah. It's hugely important that we have those spaces where young people, in particular, in, from our mm. point of view, where they can have those creative touch points and be allowed to think in those creative ways. Because um, it, it's, otherwise it's quite suffocating for them. But it's also putting that out into the world too, because I think... You know, across the spectrum, I think young people on the whole do feel unlistened to. Yeah. You know, every time there's a debate about whether yeah. they should be voting at 16 or not, it's they're basically being told their voices aren't relevant. But they are, and they are extremely relevant in these areas, and they're extremely relevant in emerging technologies yeah. because it, it absolutely shapes their lives. It's one of the things that I'm really quite pushing at the moment um, in, in the work we do, but also in kind of like my narrative of, of going to organisations is we have created that world that they are yeah. inheriting. Yeah. So we have got to support them in how do they how do they take part in that world? How are they coming into that world? Mm-hmm. Because it is very different to the world even 10 years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's not the way it was when we were going into the world. Yeah. Um I mean with some of us are still trying to find our way <laughs> in the world, but the idea is, is that that young people and I think this comes back to what you said at the beginning is somehow if you're born into it, it's your fault or it's it, that's yours. That's 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 accident of birth, yeah. you know. That's yours. That's where you are. And the same kind of goes with what we're finding with technology. It's like, well, you're young. You've, you've, you've been born into it. You know it all. But they don't understand the... They haven't invented the way that, you know, AI is going to change work. They haven't invented the way that machine learning is going to take away some responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. They haven't changed the way that the economics and the employment and the schooling has changed se- se- seismically. Yeah. They haven't invented that. Well, but they are the ones that, the, they're the ones that are actually the... They like have the, to navigate they it. They have to navigate it. Yeah. Because nobody else has gone through that process yet. And it's also the speed that, the, that this is happening, especially in the past 10 to 15 years, is unprecedented in history. So the philosophical underpinnings yep. for technological development are shifting sands. And I think people can underestimate the degree to which having a philosophical underpinning yeah. for this rapid change is important because that's what anchors us, gives us a sense of direction, a sense of purpose, helps us just make sense of the world. So not only are these youngsters having to deal with this wall of innovation coming at them, but there isn't the underpinning to help them find a guide through it. So the more we're talking about it, the more they're able to sort of, you know, put their thoughts out there on those things. Maybe the sooner we get to that point as well. Yeah, definitely. Because also the experiment, as I call it, isn't played out yet. You know, we don't know. No, we're right smack bang in the middle of it. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know, uh, you know, how are things going to play out with technology. And it does actually impact on, you know, the the, the topics around poverty and and, and all of those things. Because... You know, if we are looking at technology is going to be... If it's taking jobs, then that is you know that is a massive social issue. It could also create new jobs. We don't know what those jobs are. No wonder they're so anxious. We're telling young people mm. um, they're not going to have a job yeah. or they're not going to have a job for life. Mm-hmm. They're going to have a gig economy. They're not going to be able to afford um, education. They've all got to be entrepreneurs. They've all got to be entrepreneurs. They're all also going to... Um, they're never going to have a house. No. Oh, but also they've never had it so good, so get on with it. Mm. You know, it is a, such a confusing time for young people. It is, and I think it goes back to that age-old thing that as you get a bit older, your perspective alters. Um, you have the benefit of some hindsight. Yeah. So even when new things happen or surprising things happen, you've got a capacity to manage it slightly better. I mean, that is the the one thing that maturity gives you, right? Um, other things, <laughs> other things, not so much. But it definitely gives you that. So, yeah. but for young people, they've just lived fewer years, so they've had less time to process yeah. it. But the speed is coming at them is definitely faster than the speed any change came at our generation. Yeah, the, no doubt. It's complex and it's contradictory, but. The, there is hope and there is hopefulness. But those kids are still doing incredible. I yeah. mean, to be honest, you just like every kid I meet, I just want to pat them on the back because I'm yeah. like, you know, I am already job well done. Just sort it's of. That's why know. I love working yeah. with young people because you you don't work with young people and if you don't want to feel that kind of energy and hope and also help them because mm. I, I d- it comes back to this: we are all responsible for the world they're inheriting. Yeah. So we have all got to help them navigate that new world and then they will in time become the people that will create yeah. the new world and that's that i mean that's how it goes and but we can't just we go can't, yeah there you go get on with yeah. it but there are stark inequalities within that generation yes. so there will be kids who have had very secure upbringings who have wanted for nothing who feel the world to be a benign place 
yet there are other groups of young people for whom the world is an extremely threatening place because they've had an insecure start in life or you know they're young carers or they've been in the car system or they've been in trouble with the police and their their world can be extremely chaotic to put technology on top of an already chaotic existence where you're expected to expose yourself to the world and you know present your best face on Instagram and I mean these are extraordinary pressures so it's it is worth acknowledging the differences between the young people because they're not a homogenous group any more than our no. generation is a homogenous group um, and trying to understand how we can have them talk to each other and how we can have them collaborate with each other to help each other mm -hmm. I think is a really important part of it that often gets missed in the bigger discussions yeah. um, and I'm really keen to see what happens at the event in December yes. that Project Twisted and Think Nation are doing because I think there'll be some really exciting stuff that comes out of that because we'll have a real mix of young people in the room and also we've got some you know really great mentors because yeah. the mentors are there to help them during the day yeah we call it Seat of Pants Day yeah um, but it'll be good <laughs> I mean like you and I know we've spent enough time in in spaces with young people talking yeah. about these things so it's weirdly nerve wracking because you don't know what's going to happen like have I ever been let down no, no remarkable we have done many 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 of these and there are remarkable things come out of that yeah. day that, that stick with you it's interesting because young people want to be in real space as well yeah. so as much as they're on the phones all the time you yeah. know, and we have this thing that that's all they want to do. When you get into the same space, that's literally into the same space yeah. with young people, and you say, here's, here, yeah. let's talk about this, yeah. it just opens so much up to them. They like that opportunity. They're not getting that opportunity yeah, as much enough. now. I know. And, and, and to talk about massive big issues. And for people to take them seriously. And and take them seriously. And yeah. also do it's something not, with it's it. Not, it's not an exercise. It's not a token. No. It is like, I, for one, genuinely want to know what they come up with yeah, and too. one of the end products of this project is a book where yeah. I will harness some of the stuff that I've learned along the way and especially from young people you know that's a place to put that to, to codify it and say yeah. here are the things that they told us that matter and it's up to us whether we listen yeah. um, that's our choice that's the whole point of Project Twisted. Where can we see more about Project Twisted then? Well, the website is the hub. That's the main yep. centre of everything. So projecttwisted.com. So that's really easy to find. <laughs> We've got Project Twisted on Twitter, obviously, on Instagram. So the main thing is follow and share because one of the key goals is to create a loose community of people and organizations who are interested in these issues and interested in solving mm -hmm. the problems around how we talk about poverty and how we shame people for being in poverty. What if people actually want to get in touch with you and say I've got a project or I've got something or I want to I want to contribute to this project? Yeah this is the best bit because people <laughs> do get in touch and then my head spins on its axis and I go oh my god I've got to get back to everybody but there's a link on the website yep. really simple every email that goes through there um, the team picks up um, and we'll respond to as soon as we right. possibly can. And like I said, we produce original content, but there's also an opportunity to host content. So if people have something that they've already made or already done, and they'd like us to host it in this community, then let us know. Because right. that's the simplest and most direct way for us to be able to do something. Thank you, Mary. Oh, thank um, you, Lizzie. You're, you've got an insanely busy <laughs> schedule, so thank you very much for coming to chat with us. Thank you. We're seeing you again in December. Yep. You're going to be, I'll be at, at the, the event. event. That's going to be at the Gulbenkian at the University of Kent in Canterbury, December the 8th. You're going to be... I'm really excited about you're that. You're going to stand there and say something. Hopefully. We'll give you a microphone. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. You're thank welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having uh, me. We'll be putting all of the links to Project Twisted in the links below, but also this is all the other places you can find Project Twisted. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. Goodbye. Hope you enjoyed Triple Think. Share, subscribe, leave a comment. Love it or hate it, let me know what you thought. For more from Think Nation, check out thinknation.co. You can follow Think Nation at thinknat and myself, Lizzie Hodgson, at LHDGSN. You can find Think Nation on Facebook and Be Think Nation on Medium. We also podcast Triple Think on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Radio Public and more via Anchor.